Hi, I'm back. Andrea here. Um, I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I ended up making another bracelet uh, to match with this. Or I didn't make it, but I found another idea to make something with it. And I wanted started to string it and I was like, you know what, I should go ahead and just record so that you guys can see my process and what I came up with. So um, it's not fully kind of fleshed out yet, but um, this is kind of what I've got. I'm going to use these beads, not in this order necessarily, but I just kind of like measured it out and I'm going to go ahead and start stringing them. So I'm going to start with the bead with the big hole and I'm going to put the biggest um, like where the biggest hole is, the end with the biggest hole, since the side is a little bit, I don't know, it looks like this hole is smaller somehow to me. I'm going to put this one on the side that I plan to, um, keep the hole in. So I guess on this side, cause I'm going to cut this end eventually. And I want the, the end that I cut to go in here and, and be hidden. Also, you guys, what I mean, what I mean later. So, I'm gonna start with these light blue um, frosted glass beads. The rounds, I think they're six millimeter check glass. I don't know the color. I've had these in my stash for a super long time. So I'm gonna string three of those, and then I have one of these four millimeter daisy spacers, and it just gives a nice little separation. And then I'm gonna take. Oh gosh, and I don't know how many of these I'm going to count out, but I think I'm going to do five. I think that's what I had figured would be the right, just the right amount to kind of make it even. And uh, after I string five of these shell beads, these are recycled from another necklace that I had, I will go ahead and put another one of these daisy spacers on. And then I'm going to string the darker blue frosted bead. So I'll go ahead and put three of those on. Um, as you can see, I was trying to lay out some other ideas in here and I didn't really figure out what I wanted to do with that design. So I moved on to try and use up the remaining blue of the light blue beads. These are the last two I will have left after I finish this design, which I'm kind of excited about. It means like I've had these beads for, what, 20 years maybe, and I'm finally using the very last of them up. That just makes me really excited. So I am dividing every little section of beads with a spacer, and then I'm going to do another five of these um, shell beads. And then I'm going to add the, oh, I guess I better put a spacer on. I'm going to add the dark green or I guess it's not dark green, but I'm going to add the green frosted bead here. Again, I'm doing three. And I guess in a way, oops, I selected the wrong bead. In a way, it's going to end up being like a, almost a gradient effect in the final bracelet, which I kind of think will look cool. Um, ooh, I didn't think this through, so I'm going to go ahead and measure this is going to be, um, that's already almost three inches. And if I, if I bring this in, it's about three and a half inches. So if I start the bracelet here and keep going, I'm going to end up a little, I don't know. If I duplicate this pattern here and go back to blue and then go back to the lighter blue, I'll end up at two and a half and then that two and a half on top of my three and a half will give me not quite enough I need for my bracelet So my wrist is a little bit longer. So, hmm, I might have to um, go back to the drawing board here, maybe put some shell on this side, which isn't a big deal, but um, we'll, I'll just keep going with my pattern. I was planning on um, kind of like doing the same thing on each side, basically like doing a repeat of this pattern on the other side of the shell. But then once I got started stringing it, I was like, oh wait, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to 
split these two because then it'll just be green backing to green and I don't know if I like the way that looks so then I was like oh I'll take those out in my head and but then I don't have really the, the right pattern anymore it won't be the length that I assumed that it would be when I was originally planning this out but it'll work out in the end what I might end up doing instead is just kind of adding more of these shell beads on each end of my um, kind of like to sandwich my nautilus bead and that might end up working out so I think I'm going to continue doing what I was planning on doing which is making it like a gradient um, pattern and we'll just see how I end up so I'm going to go ahead and finish this gradient now I'm going reverse so from green I'm going back to that dark blue again And I'm going to go ahead and put my last bit of shell to separate these out. Oops, I thought I was going to be smart and just do them, stack them all <laughs> in one go. And it didn't work out that way. And one more section here. And then I'm going to measure it and see how long it goes. This is also my first attempt at using this um, bead board. And I, so far, I'm having a good time with it. I like that I can just kind of keep everything in, in one tray, I guess. Because before I was kind of spread out on a bead mat or on a piece of like felt. And the beads kind of roll everywhere. Or as you can see, I dropped them. They, they would just kind of go everywhere. Okay, so I'm now at uh, just about six inches. My wrist is six and a quarter inches. If I add another one of these five shell sections, my bracelet will probably end up being a little too long. So, because each one is about, as you can see, about a half an inch. So if I add another half an inch on each side, it'll end up being seven inches. That's just way, way too long for my wrist. So I might um, have to go back and just add a couple more beads to my shell section to get what I'm looking for. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just put this, ooh, actually, I realized that I added this spacer to the end that I don't want. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and tie not a knot, but just tie it together so I can hold it in place and, and try it on my wrist. Um, so when I'm trying it on my wrist, I can see I need another quarter of an inch at least to wear it comfortably, to stretch it comfortably and move it around my wrist. So I think I'm not going to necessarily just redo everything. I will probably just have to restring it, but... I do like the way it looks. The pattern is cute in my opinion. So I'm going to change a couple things and just add another, I don't know, maybe one in each of these. And then I will have six more or four more beads rather. I can, I can count six more of these. I keep saying six, I mean four, but four five beads is approximately a quarter of an inch so four beads will just be a just shy of that and I think that'll get me to where I need to be so I will go back and restring it and then I'll come back all right I'm back thank you for sticking with me I finished stringing it um, I tried to pick out like shells that were skinny the skinniest one not not that I was successful but I tried and then I'm going to go ahead and stretch my cord. I think I mentioned this on the other one, but um, I, w I saw this. I've been seeing this on other people's videos that stretching your cord before you tie your knot is good to get, um, to prevent your bracelet from like sagging over time with use as it's being worn and stretched over your wrist. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera.
Okay, I stretched it plenty. I think I did like 20 times or something. I'm not going super crazy with it, but um, I'm going to go ahead and knot it. Oh, I did like try it around my wrist before I went. I'm going to go ahead and knot it. I did actually like, you know, put it on to make sure that it was going to fit, you know, on my wrist. And it, it looks like it's fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and knot that. And as I said before, I'm just going to make sure that there's plenty of tension as I'm knotting it. Um, I don't want it to be, I don't want to tighten it or over tighten it, I guess I would say, but I do want to make sure that it's got tension. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep my fingers in the knot as I'm tightening it or as I'm making it. Um, so that's one. And I'm going to go ahead and do three because that's what I've seen other people do. Two and three. And then I felt like when I was doing the, the second knot, it kind of like tightened or pulled too tight. So I'm just going to kind of stretch. I, I don't want to over tighten it. So I think you'll, you'll figure it out as you go. Um... So I'm going to put my GS Hypo Cement on the knot. I I didn't know about this stuff until I started watching YouTube videos. And then I was like, I need to get me some of that. And um, I think, I don't know, it's like a couple of dollars. I, I purchased it for a couple of dollars. And I felt like it was worth it if I just put a little dot of it on each stretch bracelet I make. And since I make... I tend to make a lot of stretch bracelets. It'll last me a long time and it was a worthwhile investment if it gets me to make more jewelry than, you know, sit on my bead stash like a freaking dragon on a horde of beads. And I mean, I am, I do resemble that and I don't want to. So I just kind of threaded my cord into that bead and I'm going to try and pull the knot into the beads hole a little tough because the that knot was a little bit big but it worked out and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the excess of the cord not too closely because I'm still waiting for this to dry but um so that looks like a matching set to me I mean they're not perfectly matching matchy matchy but they are coordinating and there is color combination, color coordination on both of them. They both incorporate that beautiful Nautilus bead. Um, if I wanted to wear all three of them together, they would work together pretty well, but I do think I'm going to make a third um, just to use up more of these beads. I did use up kind of like every last one of these. I mean, I have two left. Maybe this can work on a pair of earrings if I make a coordinating pair of earrings. So I'll set two of those aside and I'll set to the green ones aside to make a matching pair of earrings. But I do have this other bracelet sort of laid out already and I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to make that work if I wanted to do basically a continuation of this same pattern but with the blue on half and the green on the other half. Maybe that could look cool. And then the same Nautilus bead. I'm almost wondering if I should just leave the Nautilus bead off I kind of like it, but I don't want to overuse it. Is that a thing? Can you, can you overuse a bead? Um, I mean, I think they're cool, but I also know that my skin gets irritated if I keep metal next to it too long. So I don't know. We'll see. If I do make it and I don't like it, I can always cut it apart, take it apart, <laughs> or if I don't end up wearing it. That's the beauty of this type of jewelry, beaded jewelry, is if I don't end up wearing it and I realize, like, it's just not something I'm, I'm going to wear, it's not coordinating with any of my outfits, I can cut it apart and reuse the beads. I can take it apart and make something for someone else that they will want or wear. So, um, there, there's no, like, it's not serious commitment, <laughs> which sounds funny saying, but I tend to be commitment phobe about things sometimes, so... I'm going to try making this other one and I'll come back and show you if it turns out well. Okay, I am back. Here is the um, completed or I guess strung 
the finished result of my stringing. Um, I think it looks cute. And if I was to kind of bundle it up together with these ones, I think it would look nice. So um, it'll be a matching trio. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just kind of try it on. And I always try it on to make sure it's going to fit my wrist because nothing is worse than realizing after it's tied and glued that it's not going to be the right fit. My wrist can wiggle in it, so that's good enough for me. I don't mind wearing my wrist, my bracelets kind of like tightly against my wrist. I don't want them super loose and hanging off. That's just me. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch it and then I'll tie it in a knot just like I did the other one and glue it. I think that's good. If you do stretch your cord, um, hang on to it tightly because <laughs> you never know. It might just go flying. I can say that from experience. <laughs> this happened to me before. This is the worst because I had beads everywhere. So, um, just like that. <laughs> almost That was almost a disaster, folks. Um, I can't seem to hold on to this little end here. Okay got this. I'm going to do my three knots just like I always do. One, two, and as I, as I tighten them, I am kind of like pulling the last knot tight because I want, I don't want uh, to necessarily like pull it tight on the first knot. I just want to pull, I want it to I don't know, close. The second knot, if I tighten it, I just really want to pull it down to the bottom and then the third knot is like the finishing knot and it won't um, drag any of the cord up at that point. Like if I pull on it, it's it's in place. So I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense because I'm at this point, I'm kind of like just bone tired. I'm not bone tired, but I'm exaggerating. That's hyperbole. But I am tired because I've been up all day working, so um, it might not be making sense right now. I'm just going to put some glue on. I have a tendency to ramble. Like, even if I'm not tired, I just have a tendency to ramble. That's just who I am. So, anyway, I'm going to put some glue on there. I tend to go with, like, the more is more approach to glue. <laughs> I don't know if that's too much, but I'm going to go ahead and string my little end through my big hole bead and bring it out the other side if I can manage that. This is kind of fiddly. Cool. And I am getting glue all over my finger, which is why I'm glad it's not super glue because it, got, it will come off my finger. And then I'm just going to tuck that knot into the hole there. And then you probably shouldn't put this on your skin or get it on your skin, but you know, it is what it is. There we go. So now I have my third final bracelet. I think that looks so cute with those colors, kind of like side by side in that bracelet. That looks really nice. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to incorporate the Nautilus bead, but I think it'll look cute as a little trio like this with the, all three of them together. That is very, it's like boho beachy, I guess I would say. Anyway, I think that's cute. I definitely think I would wear this and I'm going to make a matching pair of earrings. I won't make them today, but I'll make them, maybe I'll make them on another video because I have a bunch of jewelry that I need to uh, repurpose in the next coming months. I'll show you on what I've got, just as a preview. I've got these earrings that I pulled out of my jewelry dresser. Oh, this one isn't even attached. I must have planned to make a matching set and then never finished it. So these two little star beads. I feel like these would look cool in some other arrangement. Uh, they're pretty. But they just, they're too simple for me. Just like that. As a simple earring, that's just not, I won't wear that. Um, I have these little angels. And they're very um, 
tarnished. I don't mind the tarnished look, but um, that's just not a style I'm going to wear. That's not, I'm not going to wear an angel earring. And if you like it and that's your style, no problem, more power to you. It's just, it doesn't really go with my aesthetic. Um, but I think I can use these little flowers and some other incorporation. I can use these little wing elements in some other something and I'll take them apart. So the point, I'm going to probably make a video just showing like I'm taking these things apart and what I'm going to do with them instead, like a, re, a repurposing old beaded jewelry video. Here's a pair of earrings I bought at a, I think it was the garlic festival. And I love that coral and turquoise bead combination or that color combination. Um, but I don't really have anything else, like any other jewelry that matches this well enough to to wear it I guess and I just it wasn't getting used so I feel like I tend to want to wear sets so I think I'm gonna break these up into something and I don't know what and do something else with them maybe like split them up and use the components separately I don't know we'll see I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them but I, and they're not getting used and if they're not getting used they don't deserve a spot in my closet in my jewelry armoire <laughs> And maybe they should go to someone else. I don't know. But I've got these really simple black faceted glass earrings. I think I bought these. They came with a, a necklace that I do have and don't wear very often. Because it's kind of like a choker style necklace. But these are really just too simple for me. I need something that's more interesting and long and dangly. So... Um, I love these orange earrings. Again, too simple for me. They are just the the bead itself on an ear wire, and that to me isn't interesting enough to want to wear. They look like candy, though. I love that color. So I might incorporate that with something else that I have. Maybe I will combine these two. That's cute. Maybe something like that would happen. And then I have this one lone earring. I am pretty sure I have a second earring of these and I did make these these are something that I made myself um, a long time ago to use up beads that I had and if I was to go back and remake these again I would probably put the heavier bead the bigger one on the bottom and the smaller one on the top and they are cute I just can't find the other pair the other one in the set I don't know what to do with them so I might have to incorporate the beads and the chain into something else but it's just sitting in my jewelry drawer and it's junk because I'm not wearing it and I don't really want to wear it by itself and I don't really like it anymore. It's just not my style anymore. My tastes have changed from when I made this and it's starting to look a little tarnished, which I don't mind, but anyway, it needs to become something else. It'll, it'll transform. It needs to go into a cocoon and come out a butterfly. <laughs> so I have these set aside to be transformed in the future maybe that'll be a future video. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments and I'll record it so you guys can see what that looks like. Um, and I'll also make the matching pair of earrings for this set, for this bracelet set, and let you guys see what those look like. So I hope that you have enjoyed watching me make this set, enjoyed the process of watching me kind of plan out my, my bracelets and use up an existing piece to repurpose it and it maybe it will give you some inspiration that's the whole reason that I started um I came back to beading is because I was inspired by another youtuber called Brittany from her channel turquoise street and that truly is the reason I decided to start this youtube channel because I thought you know what she's inspiring me I have a lot of things that I want to share with people in my process. I get asked a lot of times by my friends, like, how do you figure that out? Or I would never ever have made that. Or how do you do this? Or do, do you do that? And I have like 10 hobbies. So um, I don't just have one hobby, like beating. Um, so I figured this would just be a place for me to post all my stuff, all of the creations that I make and my creative process and what how I figure out what I do and I've been doing all the stuff for many years and I have some tips and tricks to share, but I'm still learning. So it's cool to share that with you guys. Anyways, I hope you're able to get something out of this. And if you like it, 
please leave a like if you want to subscribe and see other videos I post in the future. You know, that'd be cool too, but um, no pressure and just enjoy the video. Thank you so much. Bye.